Good. Uh, just about to start the class. Uh, there's nothing to report about. I mean, I he's asking me the same questions that he asked like two weeks ago or whatever. I told him the same things that I told him two weeks ago. Is that we don't have any? He's here to try to walk past me. No, we don't. I don't have any questions, but. Um, Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So that was an interesting little tidbit from Michael Rosales, our broker. Um, let's see if I can just pull up what he was talking about. Okay, so C A R. So car.org is where we go for our contracts. Yeah, regarding the buyers. This is regarding, it's regarding where notice is given. Notice. So, so basic California contract law is there has to be a delivery and an acceptance of a contract. Right. The contract has to be delivered and then it has to be accepted. So let me pull up. That would be funny if we could log into Well, you go to transactions. So yeah, so I'm just logging into the transactions area. So I have I have like a one of my things here is called contract classes. We're gonna look at the purchase agreement. Actually, that'll be one of our documents. The residential purchase agreement. So let me just pull up the purchase agreement. Okay, so. So basically a buyer is going to sign an offer. That's what, what we're looking at right this second. So this is an offer, it starts down here, California Residential Purchase Agreement. The last page of the offer, page 16, shows the agent. Here it is. Page 16 of 16. It's right there. Yeah. So. So this is where the agent's information goes. And then it says here, designated electronic, designated electronic delivery address, check all that apply. Um, so I guess you're supposed, Michael's saying you're supposed to check this, um, you know, that you are, that you're the designated recipient of contracts which actually does make sense because you're the agent and no one is gonna be, the other side is not gonna be delivering anything directly to your client. It has to go through you. So it does make sense that email would be, would be a sufficient electronic delivery. I do remember uh, when the new contract was coming out that the attorneys had recommended not uh, to check this. Um, possibly not be responsible for something. Yes, thank because you. Because, like, if you would get something via email, say, right, like, exactly. So, 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 I remember when we were discussing the brand new contract coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I remember when we were discussing this contract. I think the attorney actually recommended that we not check this because then we're going to be responsible if something comes to us and we miss it in our email or something. So that was the original discussion that I remember from back. Yeah, I mean, this was, now I understand. Yeah, now I understand. So, so there has to be delivery, and it makes sense. It comes through the agent. Yeah, and we can't just like hold our hands. Right, right. I get it. You're right. <laughs> you know, because it makes sense. No, yes. but I need that. I wanted that other. Oh, point. and it's Thank holding you. everybody accountable. Thank so you. Yes, is, it doesn't matter. So, for instance, if 
uh, listing, you know, as a listing agent, if you receive an offer and it, nothing is filled out or checked, you want to submit this back with. It makes sense. Okay, so we're going to pull it. We're going to pull that. Yeah, I'm show it. Okay, so this makes sense because no one's sending anything directly to our client. It has to go through yeah. us. And that makes sense. everything is, e you know, by email now. So yeah, and that makes sense. You know, part of my in my meeting yesterday, I was saying. Answer your emails. Don't ignore people. <laughs> you right, know, it's, right. They get calls a lot from okay. know, other agents. So now the, the onus is on us that we need to be checking our email. Yeah. Like we are, we are now responsible. If, if a document comes in, right, we need to be sending that immediately to our client. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Unless you want to do it old school and, you know, hand handwriting, <laughs> handwriting, hand handwriting, hand 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 deliver. Okay, so, that, so that makes sense. I remember when it first came out. I wasn't with this office, but the lawyer that was with the office that I was with said, don't, for the for the reason we were talking about, yeah, don't say email because then they can send it to you at this, this time, but send a text message or, or check to that the primary mode of contact is text because if you have like your red receipt and it's not read until X amount of time, then it hasn't been delivered until you read it. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so... He was saying he was also saying that if we receive an offer as a listing agent, if we receive an offer as a listing agent and the box is not checked, that email delivery box is not checked, then we need to add a form with our counter offer called designated, designated electronic delivery address. So let's see what that form looks like. Lots of forms, lots of forms. Did you can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Um, how do I access the offer uh, form or contract from CAR? That's a great question. So we'll we'll do that. We'll do that right now. So that's where I am right now. Oh, but we'll go right back to it. So if you get an offer and the box is not checked of where the designated electronic delivery address is, on a counter offer, you but Michael is saying that you should add this document. So if the box is not checked, it's it's the designated electronic delivery address. And it's basically saying that um, if we receive something at our email address, that it's considered received. That's what, that's what it is. So um, the buyer's authorized agent, designated electronic, okay. So, that has to be signed by both 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 brokers. Okay, how do we access how do we access contracts? All right, how do we access contracts? So there's two ways to access contracts. Uh, one will be online, and one will be installing software on your computer. So I have a shared folder. Um, for anyone that's not a part of my shared folder, just email me at JJ Wallach, J-J-W-A-L-L-A-C-K. I'll write it here. JJ Wallach, my email, at kw.com. And JJ Wallach at kw.com. And I will send you an invitation to my shared folder. In my shared folder, there is a, a software download link for Mac and for Windows, and you can install zip forms on your computer. It's, the program is called ZipForms. We can also access them through car.org. So let's just say we're going to do the CAR online version. We go to car.org. And from car.org, you're going to hit this page. And then you can either go directly to access transactions from here, or you can log in first, either one. So it's sort of a three-step, one, two, three, the three or four-step process to get to the contracts. So you, you first go into car.org, and then you want to follow the transactions uh, path. So this is access transactions. Okay. So we're going to hit that, we're going to hit that one. It might ask you to log in at this point. Um, and then you're gonna have to go to this first box. Again, it says transactions. And then you're gonna press access now. 
and that's going to take you to another screen while it's validating your membership. Um, now we're going to continue again to transactions. So they make it hard to get to. I don't know why. Uh, it has to do with their back end. And then once you are able to continue and get in, this will take you to the dashboard um, or to the transaction list. And then from here, this is where all the transactions happen. Um, you would you would select this new this new box up here, and you would create a new transaction. So we'll, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. For me now, I, I just see enter your company and profile. Oh yes, yeah. so you need to set up you need to set up your profile. And then okay. Yes, so your profile. We'll go to my profile. So your profile is going to have your name that appears at the bottom of every contract, right. your email address, your phone number, your license number. Um, you can click on offices and that will also appear at the bottom of your contract. I'm that, I'm doing all that from up here. Where do you put the license number? I see. So that's, that's about, about me. That's your license number. I don't, I'm not sure that appears on your contract because we have to fill that in manually. It's it's pre-filled, so it has my okay. name, um, the office information, yep. and then I just need to put in my email address. Yeah. So I, you know, I played around with this. Like here at the address, I see that I put a separator before the address. Maybe I was just looking at the way it appeared on the contract, and I liked that way better. Uh, but this is also the place under here on settings where you can pick DocuSign as your preferred email. I mean, as your preferred uh, software for signing documents. And then you can, because we get we get free DocuSign through KW. It's normally a $240 a year subscription, but it comes with KW, your technology fee. So uh, does anyone want, I don't know, I can talk about that real quick. So um, if you don't have DocuSign signed up yet, um, make sure, well, so any, I would say that anyone who doesn't have DocuSign set up or a KW uh, email address set up, contact me. How, how's that? Because okay. I have in my shared folder, I have a new agent checklist. Um, so if you have access to my, if you have access to my shared folder, in that main folder, there's something called new agent checklist. And there's a whole checklist to go down to get everything. Like, like people feel, oh my gosh, I'm like behind or I'm not fully set up. That new agent checklist, if you go through it, it'll, it'll go step by step. But again, you can make an appointment with me and I'll, I'll go through it with you. I'll make a one hour appointment and I'll do it. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah. Okay, now today's class, we're talking about the listing presentation. So first of all, I'd say congratulations. You have a listing presentation. That's a great opportunity. So. This is this is really important. Um, it's, this is how we make our money. Um, our goal of every phone call that we make, every conversation we have with anybody is to get an appointment. So we want to be purposeful about our contacts. Like you know, we're supposed to make 10 contacts a day, 20 contacts a day. But the whole goal, the whole goal of that is not to fill out our list that we made our 10 or 20 calls. I mean, of course, we want to make our 10 or 20 calls, um, but that's not the goal. The goal is not just to make the calls. The goal is to make the calls with a purpose, and the purpose is getting a meeting. So I really don't want to spend that much time on the phone with somebody because um, I want to get to my next call. I do want to spend enough time on the phone to get an appointment. So, so I don't know if that makes sense. That I, makes sense. Right? I, I just, that's the whole goal of the call. It's not just to make calls. <laughs> okay. That's the goal of the call. So if I'm talking to somebody and I ask them, do you have any plans this year for real estate? It's buying or selling anything in, two, in the remainder of 2023. Is that in your frame of mind right now to do anything in real estate? And if they... If they say maybe, that's an appointment. Let me come over, you know, tell you what your house is worth, but what I think we can get for it. My whole, my whole goal is to get in there and, and then tell and explain my value. To them. So my value 
is that I can get them the most money in the shortest amount of time. And uh, right. So uh, any seller wants to know that they can, how much money they can get for their property. Now, a seller's goal is to get a number out of me, right? And I'm not, I'm not trying to buy a listing like with the highest number. Um, a seller, if a seller is talking to three agents and one agent gives them the highest number, they might want to go with that agent that's giving them the highest number, right? Because that's natural. Right? Of course, this person is telling me they can get me this much. I want to go with that person. Um, but the important part is to bring the seller to reality with comps and to arrive at a number that is attractive to get offers. It's a very funky market right this second where we are, where it's September, 2023. Um, we are in a market right now where I'm seeing properties go on the market at a good price where I think they should get, be getting offers and there's none. And I'm hearing that from other agents right now. And then maybe that's just in some markets, you know, we're very, we're very area focused. In another area, you put something on and you still get 20 or 30 off. That's Burbank Glendale. So, yeah. yeah, like when I look over Burbank Glendale, uh, when, I, when I zoom over there in the MLS, I see a ton of activity. There's a lot, a lot of sales going on. And then I'll come back to the city and I'll look at areas and there's no activity. Like it's dropped in half from last year. But yeah, the valley has been smoking. It's on fire. Um, that could just be with a, uh, due to affordability, but there seems to be a lot of buyers. Again, we still have a still have a writer strike right now. Um, I say, I mean, it better ends. LA is really dependent on the entertainment community. That this is our when I when I got into real estate, I remember the first meeting I was at. My office manager said, "You know, our clients are the entertainment community. Like this is LA. So sports, entertainment. This is this is the hub." Uh, so just saying, hope it ends soon. Um, okay. Now I'm all excited. I have an opportunity to go on a listing appointment. Where do I start? So, okay. So um, I have these folders that I use. This is called a classification folder. This is really old school. <laughs> now, um, you know, I don't know if, if you can do everything in PDF or online there has to be something printed i mean you have to show us something yourself right and you have to stay organized in your business um i can tell you that i print a lot less than i used to um there are a lot of things that i don't print out anymore like contracts of course i'm going to print the original contract but most contracts now are done via DocuSign, so it's all digital signature um but we're going on a listing appointment, so we want to bring our listing agreement. We want to bring a printed listing agreement. Our goal is to get a signed listing agreement at the end of our listing appointment, right? Um, the shortest listing appointment is going into a property and saying to the seller, is there anything you'd like to discuss before we sign the listing? <laughs> right? If there's nothing to discuss, let's go sign the listing, right? Um, you don't want to talk yourself out of a listing. We can oversell, right? So don't oversell. Uh, we want to make sure all their questions are answered. There's all different types of sellers. You know, this is this is also like a psychology part to it. Um, we deal with we deal with normal. We deal with crazy. I'd say there's a lot of crazy out there. Uh, we're going to deal with hoarders. You know, well, who knows what kind of situation we're going to walk into. It's amazing when you walk into a, a completely pristine, beautiful property. I mean, that, that's like a gift. Um, a lot of times we're going to be walking into a place where they've lived there for a long time. Um, so there are going to be conversations with the seller just about open houses. Um, so, okay, let me see. That's some papers. Okay. Oh, I put them on. Put Michael's papers on the one. So, all right. So let's start with this. So this is a, this is a classification folder. Um, I do recommend that you get some of these. 
They are expensive. Um, I was able to get some from Office Depot in their clearance section for a dollar in the, in the, on their online website. They were in clearance for a dollar. That's an amazing, because they're, they're usually three, three, four, five dollars each. Um, I like to get green because it's the color of money. I like a little darker green, but this is what they gave. This is what green was in the in this in the closeout section, but whatever. Um, so classification folder, they come in different, so they come in um, letter size and they also come in legal size. I used to only get legal size, but there are almost no documents printed in legal anymore. Sometimes escrow will still use legal size. Um, so that would be the only thing, but even your printer will shrink it down to letter if you print it. So I don't, I don't buy the legal size anymore. Um, okay, and so I have a label maker and I put the property address on my folder with the zip code. So that's the first thing I do. Uh, the next thing I do is I will write the seller's names over here. And that can be in pen or pencil. I'll just put the seller's names. And that's so I don't forget their names while I'm talking to them at my appointment. <laughs> that would be pretty embarrassing. Um, so I keep their or, or calling them the wrong names. I so can't I, see I have, what you're doing. You can't see what I'm doing? No. Can you see me now? The e-sign e option. <clears throat> oh, I saw the screen. screen. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm only sharing my TV screen? Here. I can. Okay, I can see your cursor. You can see my cursor. Okay, that's weird. Um, no, you want to stop your share. Okay, I'm going to stop my share. And I'm going to go. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I just put folder. Is that sharing? <laughs> that my sharing. Techniques. You should be, if you walk back in front, you should be fine now. Yeah. Um, are you seeing this whole are you seeing this screen or are you full screen on me full screen on the classroom okay perfect don't zoom in um okay so classification folder and i put i i use a label maker i put the address here with the zip code i write my seller's names here so i wrote here seller name one, number one and number two um, I can also put phone numbers and email addresses here uh, just so I have them. But it's again, it's so I don't forget their names. You're going to be a little nervous on your listing appointment, which is uh, natural, unless you're going on a lot of appointments. The more appointments you go on, you know, you're not going to be nervous. I, I'm, uh, when, before I go into my listing appointment, I'm always in my car, psyching myself up, you know, and then uh, I know. This is this basically this half hour to one hour appointment is could be you know it's a it's a 30 to forty thousand dollar appointment you know so of course you're going to be a little nervous that's that's a lot of money based on half hour one hour appointment so it's natural you know but to shake it out get yourself you, you are going to do a good job for this seller right you're gonna you're gonna do all the right things you're gonna have great photos of their property you're going to accurately describe it. You're going to get it into the MLS. You're going to do the open houses. You're, you're there for them. You're, you're going to make it happen. So, you know, there's no one that can do a better job than you. You're going to do a great job, right? So just go in there strong, confident. Yeah. Uh, do you have a guide that, that uh, towards the property taking photos or? So I always, I, I hate to use the word always, right? Or never. Um, I prefer to use a professional photographer for my photos on all my listing, on all my listings. I prefer to do that. Um, I hear you. You know, my wife might argue with me on a lease because, you know, every, every listing you take is a financial decision. I hear what you're and on, saying. And on a lease, you're not really making that much money. I understand. Money. So when you pay a photographer $300 to $500, and you're, and you're able to make 1200 on your lease, right. if you get just represent the seller side. 
I mean, no, phone cameras are really good yeah. these days. Yeah. Oh, right. I mean, I was watching the the new iPhone video. They were filming a whole movie with the iPhones. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've, 48 I've megapixel. Them. Yeah. So, but it, every every listing that we take is a business decision, and we have to justify the money we're spending versus what we're going to make. And it's not a guarantee we're going to make it. Right. Um, is there I, is there any way to how do how do I determine how much I should be paying somebody? Like, is so I would say by the hour. Do you pay by photography? Yeah. So um, Yelp is a great resource. I would I would look any photographer that you're going to hire. Definitely go to their website. Look at their portfolio of what they've photographed. Um, look at other agents' uh, MLS listings. Look at their photos. You can always reach out to any agent that you like the photos and see if they'll share their photographer with you. Uh, yeah, you had a comment from that? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, before you you do take pictures with your phone, is particularly for iPhone users, um, you have to make sure you change your settings because iPhones will not load to the MLS. iPhone photos do not load to the MLS. Interesting. They're, they're, what, is it, what is it that prevents it from loading? They're not formatted as JPEG. iPhone does not format their photos in JPEG. Oh, okay. And if you change the format on your phone to JPEG, lose all of the fancy stuff that makes the phone a good camera. Got it. So you, you could take photos with your iPhone and then but at that point, export them on your computer. You could take, so no, no, no. Export them to JPEG. No. If you take the photo, so if you take a photo, so if I take my iPhone on its great camera settings, I take a picture and I export that picture to my computer and then I can, and then I convert it to JPEG on my computer, it won't load. If I try to just upload it as it is, it won't load. The only way it'll load is if you make it an original JPEG on the camera itself, which cuts out all the benefit of the phone. So if you're going to take pictures at a listing, bring a camera. Yeah, okay. That's a good thing I got. I haven't, I haven't had that experience myself. I only do that because like for me, I'm, I'm like you, I'm going to pay for a professional yeah. at all of my listings, but I've been doing like a lot of leases this year. So to save myself money, I've been doing them on my phone. Never works. And the, it was only- I, I, we, we have to talk about that because uh, I haven't had the same experience. I'll take a picture right now and upload it at, at the end of class to an MLS listing. If I'm we'll, see if, we'll see if we can do it. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure because then I'm going to recommend not doing it. Yeah, I'm only saying that. And I've only had that yeah, no, thank with you. iPhones. I don't know. There's a, I know that there is a limit on, it has to be under five megabyte each picture mm -hmm. has to be under 500 meg, yeah. five meg. And then um, on your showcase listing, it has to be under 250K. Yeah, and the only way I've been able to do it from my phone to my computer is if I make all of the adjustments in the phone. We're gonna try it, we're gonna try it, we're gonna try it. Okay, um, all right, so what is in my folder? The magic folder. So there are, there are things that I'm bringing with me to my listing presentation. This is one. Uh, this is going to have a lot of stuff in it. I'm going to go through that with you. I'm also going to be bringing the listing presentation that I'm leaving with the seller. Okay. Uh, in our marketing department next to us, they do have, they have binders um, that are beautiful covers um, that they, they will bind. I think they charge $20, $30. I'm not sure, but it's a, it's a hardcover binding. And they have a machine that melts the glue and it sets all the paper in it. And it's a professional book. It's gorgeous. I have that. I bought one for myself personally. Um, our marketing department has one. Um, Let's see first just print or, or just. You can, you, can, you can go to Kinko's. You can go to Kinko's Office Depot. You can find there. Um, we happen to have something cool. You should look at it in the yeah. marketing department. Okay, so what am I putting in my folder? So the first thing we're doing is the residential listing agreement, right? That's gonna be the very first thing. This is where I put it on my, on my listing goal. So residential listing agreement, that means that we're going into zip forms. We are printing out a listing. We're gonna go into the listing agreement and fill it out. How do we know the names of the sellers that we're putting here? So this is where we're gonna log into title. Um, Property, so I'm putting a property report from title with the grant deed. So this is important. Um, we're gonna, we should all have accounts with Clearmark Title. That's our office's title company. 
Um, so if you don't have an if you don't have an account with Clearmark Title, email Jerry at Clearmark Title, J E R R Y at clearmarktitle.com. Jerry, J E R R Y at clearmarktitle.com. So that is our office's title company. We are also affiliated with Lauren Goldman at First American and Brandon Miller at Fidelity, right? So they, those are also excellent title guys. They are here talking at our office meetings. Um, can you email Jerry asking for one? Yeah, you're asking just, can you create an account for me? Uh, I'm an agent at KW Beverly Hills. Can you create a clear mark? Can, we, can you create an account for me with title? And then you'll have access, you'll get an email back from him with access to be able to get into title at Clearmark. So when you go into Clearmark Title's website, then you'll be able to enter an address and get a property profile. I'll show you what one looks like. So this is a property profile. This is a property profile. Okay. Inside the property profile, um, it shows who the owner is and it'll say like recent sale. And then you can click on the document number. That's the recorded grantee. So I'm looking at that to see the correct spelling of the, who's on title, the correct spelling of their names. Maybe the property is in a trust. It'll give me, it'll say, you know, the, here, the property is hereby granted to John Doe trustee and Jane Doe trustee of the John and Jane Doe trust dated such and such date. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, so when you go to clear title, you search via address, you search via address, and then you get a uh, property profile report. Okay. It's going to say generate comp report, Okay. profile comp report. It's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Um, and you said you click on the document numbers. And then you, and then once you have the report, right? copy it, download it, download it, save it. You can print it. I, I do print it for, the, for this. And then I'll go to the recent sale section and there will be a document number. That recent sale might be 30 years ago, but there should be a document number there that I'm gonna click on that's gonna give me the last grant deed. Okay. I'm also gonna follow the chain of title just to see, you know, it was grant. I'm gonna go all the way back from when the property was sold, was sold to them. There should be a dollar amount that it was sold for. And I, I'm just looking back to see who bought it. When, it, when, they, when the person that they, they bought it from, when they bought it, I'm just making sure because sometimes someone will remain on title for 20, 30 years, even though it's changed to other people. It could be family members, partners, right. like who knows. So I'm just trying to make sense out of who's the owner right now, because you need every single owner to sign your listing agreement. If, if there are two people on title and only one person signs this, you don't have a valid listing agreement. You don't have an enforceable listing agreement. To be enforceable, it has to be signed by everybody. So, uh just to summarize, go to yeah. cleartitle.com. Clearmark, clearmark title. Clearmark title. Search by address. Yeah. Uh, click on the search by address. Then you're gonna then you're gonna get a property profile. Property profile. You're gonna generate a property profile. And then once you have the property profile, you're going to click on the the document from the last sale. Gotcha. Thank you. It may not actually be a sale, it might be a transfer into a trust. But, but that's what it's called the last sale. That's the area. Understood. Um, but I'm going to help you with that. Like when, don't worry. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. When, when you say, JJ, I have a listing appointment, <laughs> that's a call to me. I'm going to help you. Appreciate it. Okay. So property profile from Title Grant. What else is in here? Um, a plat map. So that's, that's a map showing all the properties on the block. So you can see the borders of each property on the block. And then I'm also going to have 
a parcel profile report from Zemus. So there's there's a there's an LA City website called Zemus, Z I M A S. It's zemus.lacity.org. I'm going to go there and hunt for a property profile. So that property profile I I can show you, you know, after I go through the folder. That property profile actually says uh, what zones the property's in, flood zone, fire zone, earthquake zone. It also talks about landfill. I like to look to see if the property is on landfill. Uh, a property that's on fill, or they call it compacted soil, um, if it's on that, it might crack a lot. It's not a stable foundation, you know, unless, who knows, unless they went really far deep into, you know, there, there, are, there are houses in the mountains. La yesterday, I was driving down Laurel Canyon and you see those houses on stilts. They're crazy. Like I was really looking at them yesterday. Each house has three stilts in the front and then an empty space here and a cement up the mountain. So you have this, this entire house. I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, here's the mountain. Here's the house, and here's three pegs that this house is sitting on, and the mountain's here. It's like a triangle. It's, it's just insane. There's like 10 of them. But those three pegs, those three are, pegs. are inserted into cement. I know, but there's like... I know. It, I've, it, it's like, I started shaking just looking at it. Like, it's <laughs> crazy. crazy. Okay, so I got that. Okay, so that's, that's what I have here. I have a couple of other things that I'll show you. Um, so also, you're going to ask title for an estimated seller's net sheet. So it's really important to the seller how much they're going to walk away from the property with in their, in their pocket. So we have Pele as our escrow officer here. Um, Pele is more than happy to generate a, a net sheet. Now, in order to generate this net sheet, you need to give a price to Pele. <laughs> now you're giving a price to Pele without knowing what price you're gonna agree that you're listing the house for. So my suggestion is to get four different net sheets with different prices and not show them to the seller. <laughs> not, not, I wouldn't pull them out. Like I will keep them in my briefcase while we're discussing a price to list at. And, uh, if they ask me what they can expect to get, um, at the end of at the end, once we're agreeing on a number, I'll pull that out if that's if that's an area topic of conversation. It might not be something that I'll have here. I would, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page as far as price. Like you might have your net sheets at one and a half million, and you're walking into a listing presentation where the seller thinks they're going to get two point one. You don't want to pull out your one and a half net sheet. Right, because they'll think that whatever. I mean, it's up to you. I wouldn't want to take a two point one listing if you really thought the value was one five. Right, so that's a whole different conversation. But I don't want to lose a listing um, from a seller that thinks I'm I'm underpricing their property too low. But I'm I'm also at my appointment trying to figure out if the seller needs to sell. Are they motivated? Like if they want to price the property a little high. Is there something that's motivating them to reduce it a month from now if it doesn't sell? Right? Because I'm going to be investing my time and money now in their listing. So I need to make sure that it's a good investment. All right. Comps from the MLS. So we're gonna we're gonna do comps. We're gonna do comps today. Um, we're going to always do comps in this class. We do comps when we write an offer, we do comps when we take the listing. Um, so there's different reports. When we do comps, it's all from the it's all from the CMA page in the MLS. There are three different reports I'll print. So it's the column report, feature sheet, and the market analysis. Uh, the column report is just a one line report, and it's going to show your property as the subject property, and it's going to show your other sold properties of comps. Uh, we also were going to have separately from this or on the same page, active listings. 
Now, active listings are not comps, but they are competition, right? So that's what I'm explaining to a seller. When, when buyers are trying to determine what price they're gonna offer for your property, they are gonna be looking at previous sales in the area, looking for similar properties that have recently sold, and they're gonna make their offer based upon that. So what someone else is asking doesn't matter. What matters is what has sold. Now, what does matter with asking is we don't want to be, we don't want to ask more for our property, which is not as good as the property down the street. So we don't want to overprice based upon what else is out there. Right? Does that so, make sense? So you don't include the competition, but you certainly make a note of it. I note it to, to position our, uh, to, I want to know how we're positioning ourselves relative to the other properties that are for sale. So you might bring it up in conversation, but you won't include it in the condo. Right. So if I'm, let's say I'm listing a property in a condo building um, and we are. $300,000 condo. I don't know, but I mean, we're, we're in a condo building. So when we're in a condo building, I'm only looking in the building at previous sales. And that's great. But what, what, what if there haven't been any previous sales in the building for the past six, six, seven, eight years? Like no one has sold. But there's currently two properties for sale in the building, right? Now I need to see what is for sale in the building that we're going to be competing with to make sure we're competitive. That, that's, what I'm, that's where I'm getting at. Okay, what else is in my folder? Schools. Schools. So very important. I'm, I'm now telling the seller that I am an open house expert, right? I mean, that's where I'm getting with this. Um, when every single buyer that comes into your open house, I'm going to have a discussion with them about the schools if they have kids. So I'm prepared for that. If, if they're in a great school district, believe me, they are... They, will, they are going to expect you to know how great the school district is in their, in their neighborhood, because that's probably why they bought it in the first place, maybe, you know, but they definitely know that. Um, if you're listing a property out in Calabasas, West Lake, anywhere in that neighborhood, Oak, uh, whatever, Oak, uh, Oak Park, those all, most of those schools are nine and 10 out of, out of 10. Those are great. It's a great school district. Um, you need to know that. On, on your listing appointment. So if you go into Google and you go LAUSD school finder, you can do this in any county. Um, you can find out what the school district is. Um, just Google it. You know, school finder, school finder Santa Barbara, school finder Simi Valley. Um, you'll be able to find a website where you can enter the property address and, and it'll tell you what the K through five, six through eight, and nine through 12. It'll tell you the three different schools, elementary, right? K through five, elementary, and elementary, middle school, and high school. Um, once you have that information, then you'll want to go to another website called school-ratings.com. School-ratings. And you'll find the school that is your school. And that will take you to a page that shows the rating out of 10 points. Um, hopefully it's a good rating. So <laughs> hopefully it's good. So whatever the highest rated school is, that's the one that's going to be on this page, <laughs> right? If, if it could have an excellent uh, elementary or excellent middle school and the high school is just horrible. I see that all the time. So my, the high school one will be underneath, but the, the top one will be on top. So I just want the seller to know I'm prepared to talk to anyone about that. Um, in the MLS, there's, there's an input sheet. Um, I'll show you how to get there when we're in the MLS. Um, it's, it's a lot of pages. I think it's like 30, 20 something pages, 30 pages. But it's, it's, the, it's the paper version of what you're going to be inputting when you upload the data to the MLS. When you're inputting your listing, into the MLS, there's gonna be check boxes. Um, what kind of floor, wood, slate, tile, you know, what's in the kitchen, cooking appliances, 
So all of those things are on a printed sheet. And I have that here. I print it. And I'm filling that out. Maybe not the day of my listing appointment, but it will be filled out while my photographer is there. So while my photographer is doing his thing, I will be doing my thing, and that's filling out the listing sheet. Yeah, please. So that sheet, which I've never seen, because uh, I stumbled through the listing yes. agreement, right? Or the putting on the MLS. Yeah. Can you send that sheet to your client? Is that something you could ask? Because I have, I have heard. Roof or kind of I have sewer. heard. Yeah, I have heard of other agents sending it to their client to fill out. And then they send it back, and then you go on the MLS, and you can just pop all the answers. Yes. It is a little intimidating. Right, it it's a little intimidating, right? It is it's a lot of paper, and it's a little intimidating, and they might not know how to fill it out. Um, so that's just my challenge. So what I do is I fill it out the best I can, and if I have questions about anything, I'll put a question mark next to it, and I will give a bunch of questions to the seller so I can fill it out properly. If you don't know how to fill something, like if you don't know the answer to something, it's better to leave it blank. That's what it does. Yeah. Okay, so that's the listing input sheet. What else is under here? Um, that's where, this is where I'm gonna put all my inspections. So if I'm printing my inspections, they're gonna go in this folder, that's where I put them. Um, another thing that goes in this folder, once, uh, once escrow is opened and I'm in a deal, right? So uh, inspections will go in there. The other thing that's gonna go in here, maybe a title report. Right, we're gonna not the property profile that I'm pulling, but an actual preliminary title report. Okay, so once once you get the listing, that's a different class. What to do after? What to do after you take a listing? After you take the listing, then we're gonna order a title report from title. So that's that's after you get the listing. Um, the other thing is we're gonna open escrow. Right, so. If you have a property that's in an HOA, a condo that's in an HOA, um, the seller has to provide HOA documents to the buyer. The buyer has to know what they're getting themselves into with CCNRs. Does the property have rental restrictions? Does it have pet restrictions? Um, right? Can you put a barbecue on the balcony? The only way to know all these answers is to have the CCNRs. So if you have a condo listing, I would recommend that you order the CC, have this have the seller order CCNRs or the HOA package, we call it the HOA package through escrow, through the escrow that you want to use. Yeah. Can you say that one more time? Yes. If you're gonna take if, when you're taking a listing uh, in a condo building <laughs> and you're pricing right, like we want to make sure we're we're pricing. Right, because this is gonna cost, it might cost a little money right now to order this. There's a management company maybe that charges for this. Now it's important that these documents go through escrow because if we buy, let's say there's a hundred dollar fee to the management company to prepare this. If we pay the money ourselves, the hundred or the seller pays directly to the management company and it doesn't go through escrow, it's not considered official. And then escrow will have to reorder it in order for them to receive it, to give it to the buyer. So, because I understand, we're if if we're if it's touching us first, we could doctor it. Something could be missing. It has to go through escrow. So, if there's an HOA, inquire about CCNDARS and pay HOA. So, we want to we want to order the HOA package for a sale. It's an HOA sale package, basically. So, if I know that I'm using Pele at escrow, um, I will ask Pele. Uh, to order that and build the seller, basically. Okay. So I'm asking the seller to incur that expense. Yeah. And the building seller means that they can, they can be paid at escrow. Hopefully. I mean, it's, it's a bill that's going to sit there. I mean, I don't know if they'll even start the process without getting paid up front. So the but seller might have to pay. Yeah. Right. So. Right. So now that I'm thinking about it, like I have a property now in a condo that I'm going to be listing and I need to do this. Right. I had, but I'm afraid with what's going on, just our, my seller really wants top dollar for this property. I'm afraid, I'm a little afraid that this is not going to sell so quickly. And I mean, she, but she knows, like she knows it's, gonna, it's where it's being priced. She knows that. 
Uh, but I, I'm, I'm just concerned. I'm, for my HOA. Wow, that's a lot. So I, I am conscious that we don't want to incur expenses unnecessarily. Now, the reason that you want these HOA documents and the title report in hand is not only to answer questions to potential agents and buyers that are coming in, but it's also so we can do a fast escrow. If you have a cash buyer that needs to close in a few days, right? That could happen. If someone comes with cash, they did five day escrow. They can't, you, the fast, what someone says to me, what's the fastest escrow you can do? The fastest escrow I can do depends on title and the HOA giving those documents because you can't close without title. I mean, you can, but that's a huge risk for a cash buyer. The lender won't close without title insurance. Um, so ordering that preliminary report up front is important because it could take a little time. So that's where I'm, that's where I was going with that. You time. Yeah. And uh, I imagine that this is this process is identical to uh, kicks. Kicks like uh, uh, tenant in common. Tenant in common. Um, yeah. Just yeah. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how title is held. The only thing that matters how title is held is who's signing your listing agreement. Now, right, who's signing a listing agreement? So tenant in common is usually, so in order to have, so different, different methods of holding title, um, you can have joint tenancy. Joint tenancy has the right of survivorship. Um, joint tenancy has to be taken at the same time. So, you know, there has to be a grantee to everybody that's on title at the same time in order to have a joint tenancy. If anyone comes after the fact, it becomes tenants in common and they can own different shares. Joint tenants own, they, they both own 100% or three people, they all own 100%, which makes sense because if someone passes away, they're, they, you know, there's no interest for them anymore. So everyone basically owns 100%. In a tenant in common situation, they can have different ownership interests. So one person can own 10%, another person can own 10%. Um, in a partnership, the same thing. Okay, another thing that I'm going to bring with me are a calendar. So in my shared folder, I have calendars like this that you can print and bring with you. You can also create your own. I, I did this through Word. Um, what's in my calendar is we're talking about open houses now and holidays. So I want to sit with the seller and go over the open house process at my listing presentation. This is part of, part of selling your house is me doing open houses here. Um, so we're going to talk about that. But while I'm thinking about it, during this conversation, I am going to tell the seller to add to the open house. I will have my eye on everyone that comes in here. Um, but I do recommend that you put away any valuables, uh, expensive cosmetics, any pharmaceuticals in medicine cabinets. Um, because... You know, I'll, I'll keep my eye on pretty much everyone that I can, but if someone goes into a bathroom and closes the door behind them, I can't follow them in the bathroom. I mean, I can't do that. So just make sure there's nothing in the bathroom, drugs, right? Makeup. Yeah. yeah. In case something, the owner says that something is stolen from the property from the open house, are you liable for that? How does you that work? are not. Um, okay. In the listing, in question. the listing agreement, it says that the seller... Uh, has insurance and they will okay. continue to carry insurance and that they're liable for anybody that gets hurt on the property during the time. And we're not. It says that the listing for the listing agreement protects us as long as we are operating in our, in, you know, good faith. Good faith. Yeah. Exactly. We, we are a fiduciary. We have to operate good. Faith. So that's it. as long, you know, if they can prove negligence for us, like let's say um, there's an open house going on, and I walk a block away to pick up lunch and I just leave the open right, house. That's right, negligence, yeah. right? So even our errors and errors in the missions insurance might not cover us for something like that. So, okay, so what's on my calendar? My calendar says, um, so this is October, let's see. So September, what, what I'm trying to get here is I'm talking about how long it's gonna to take to get the, to get the property photo ready. This is an important issue. When does the property, when, how long will it take to get the property photo ready? Because that's when I can start my marketing. That's when we can get to the MLS. That's when I can start my marketing. We can't do any showings until the property is ready to be shown. I can bring people in here right now, but they're not going to be making a high 
you know, as high an offer as they were walking into a pristine property that's clean and beautiful and ready to present. So, you know, now it's up to you also as far as the property walkthrough. So usually you'll come to a property and you'll do a walkthrough. Um, some people do the walkthrough at the end. Some agents do it in the beginning. It's totally up to you. Um, you know, I don't even need to go to a property to list it, right? I mean, I can send a listing agreement, go and do my thing. So, okay. Um, JJ? Yes. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Hi. Um, I have a quick question. So let's say you're in the home and the furniture just is in doing anything for the home and showing it and everything, would you suggest maybe staging certain parts of the home if if it's the price? So, I'm, I, so any, any listing that I walk into, I am just assessing how much the seller wants, how fast they want to sell it for, I mean, how fast they need to sell it in, you know, it's, it's everything is going through my mind. Like what's their motivation? Um, staging is a great thing because most people just don't have imagination right. uh, to, to picture what it could be. The people that make a lot of money in real estate um, have vision, right? When they go into a property, they see its potential, not what it actually is right now. Mm -hmm. So, but most people don't have that. I, I have zero creative bone in my body. I'm not a creative. I've got it. <laughs> right. So um, I'm always like proud of myself when I come up with something in a house. Oh, I can do that. But but I watch designers walk into a house and be like, move this, move that, put that there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. So those, those people make money, right? Thank you. Um, okay. So on my calendar, I have Tuesday, 11 to 2, Brooklyn Caravan. I have Sunday open houses, either two to five or one to four. 11 to two on Tuesday is gonna be a uh, broker caravan in the city. The Valley usually has open houses on Fridays, 11 to two. If I have an open house in the Valley, I will probably have an open house on Tuesday and Friday. So I wanna be open when the city people are looking and when the Valley people are looking, right? I might even be open Thursday too. I, mean, I don't know. So it's no, just know the area. If you go on the MLS, you can see where the when the other properties are having listings. Another clever trick is if you see that there's going to be an open house near you uh, on the same day that you're doing yours, try to position your signs where you are getting traffic from their open house. Right? No, oh, really. Like. Uh, Look, look and see if there are other open houses in the area. And on the corner of that, wherever that other house is, put your sign pointing towards your house and create a directional towards where. Take their sign down. Not take their sign down. <laughs> yeah. How do you get those signs? How does that work? So we, we partner, oh, not partner, but we have a great company called quicksignsadvertising.net. Quick signs, it's called quick signs. Quick signs, quick signs advertising.net. Um, the marketing department can help you with that, but you can go to their website too. There's a Keller Williams link. Um, and you pay for it. You pay for it, yeah. Are they expensive? Uh, they are. Everything, everything in this life <laughs> world is expensive. Yeah. Um, I mean, these, these, these signs used to be 40 something dollars, and I thought that was expensive. Then they went up, then they went up to. But you could reuse it. How much is it? Oh, How okay. much is it now? They're like 60, they're like $60 now. But you're getting two signs on the, on the A frame. Uh -huh. Right, because they have to print two of them. Okay. You got one on each side. And then they can't even print, like the arrows, if you think about it, they have to print two separate signs because one arrow is going this way, one arrow is going that way on the same sign. So, yeah. And but I would, recommend, I would recommend you, getting six signs, a minimum, you, a minimum of six. Yeah. If you pay more, what I did was I have where you can erase. You okay. write in the address yeah. with, with the special magic pen. Right. So talk, so, okay. So talking about signs real quick, I've had, when I, when I started, my lead generation was open houses. That's how I started. I bought 30 signs. Wow. Not, all, not, all, not all at once, but I had 30 signs. Like my entire morning of my open house was spent putting out signs and afterwards picking them up. I was exhausted at the end of the day. 
What company I've, are they I've, putting a sign for you now these days? I put my own sign. No, 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 those days, yeah, of course. So, so, but I'm just saying on the signs, um, I did have some that had the chalk, they had a black chalk area where I would use chalk. Mm -hmm. um, I also had uh, just a blank area and I would write with, um, you know, these, these whiteboard markers. Uh, the thing is, if you're using, if you're using the whiteboard markers or you're using chalk on your signs and there are sprinklers, yeah. it'll come right off. So we also, this, this quicksignsadvertising.net also offers signs that have clear pockets. Um, so what I do is, I know. Not this, not this. Not today. For the listing. Do, do, do you, are you going to be uh, giving out a, a, a printed? This is not the listing agreement class. Wow. This is the listing presentation class. Wow. Right? I mean, we can go through a listing agreement, but um, so DJ, is what I'm looking for. Yeah. Where we order the signs from, is that where we would order our name tags from as well? Um, yeah. I'm not sure. The front desk can help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. First front desk, nice. ask, ask uh, Mariah. The, the website link has Thank all you. KW products. You okay. Can get, you can get signs, flyers, flags, um, name tags. You can get. Oh. I'm looking. I'm looking in my West Hollywood folder for what I put in my signs, but West Hollywood doesn't allow signs. <laughs> okay. Oh. So. At all. So it's, it's, they don't allow. They don't allow a frame signs. Well, that's good to know. You can't. You can't put them on. Well, they. Not that they don't allow them. You can't put them on public property. So you can't put them on a regular street corner. You can knock on the neighbor on the corner and ask permission to put it on their private property. And then you can have it on their private property only during the hours of your open house. AJ, there's signs all over West Hollywood, A-frame signs on Sundays and Tuesday. Yeah. Every I'm just, I'm just communicating what the okay. law. Yeah, <laughs> right. So you, yeah, you you can get you can get fined. Wow. Um, I so I've been in this office years ago, where uh, they get notified that the Beverly Hills Police Department is holding signs for a ransom. <laughs> if you want to come get your sign, you can buy them back. Yeah, right. Wow. You can buy them back. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So my calendar. Back to my calendar. What I'm getting at with my calendar is I'm I'm trying to figure out when I'm trying to get deadlines here, right? I want my seller to sign a listing and we're trying to figure out time. I, I need to create urgency. You always have to create urgency. When you're working with the buyer, you need urgency. When you're working with a seller, you need urgency. Sign the listing, <laughs> sign the listing, right? So creating urgency is going over this timeline. Um, you know, when do, when do they want to sell by? And then I work backwards. Like if you want to sell by this time, this is everything that needs to happen in order to make that happen. Because we're going to have a 30 day, 45 day escrow. We also need to give time for the marketing and the open house. Offers aren't going to come in the same day. Hopefully they will, but you know, we can't count on that. Um, so I'm going, I'm looking at holidays. I'm looking at the open houses on Tuesday, the open house on Sunday. And I'm also showing them my marketing deadlines. So I have here the MLS um, print deadline is 10 a.m. Friday morning. So in order for me to have pictures into the MLS and have our open house, our Tuesday broker open house, in order to have the marketing ready for that in the MLS guide, we need to have everything submitted by 10 a.m. Friday. In order to have everything submitted by 10 a.m. Friday, I need to have pictures back by at least Thursday. In order to have pictures on Thursday, I need to take them on Tuesday or Wednesday, right? So we're just working backwards. We're going over a timeline. We're making this happen. We're gonna plot out with them. These are the days I'm gonna have open houses. You, you will not be at your house during the open house. The, the worst thing that you can do is have a seller watching you, criticizing every single thing you do at an open house. You know, no, no two people are the same. Nobody's marketing the same way. Nobody has the same strategy. If, if a buyer comes into the open house and you talk to them and then they leave, the seller is going to say, you didn't say this, you didn't say that, you didn't tell them about that. 
the buyer wasn't interested, right? Like they came in, right. you know, you talked to them. You, they were clearly not interested in the house, but the seller was like, you could have told them this, you could have told them that, like they could have really been a buyer, but they're not. Yeah. How often does the seller, I have two questions. Never so. have a seller in the house. <laughs> but that, that's the answer. Never have a seller in the house. So there are sellers that they want to be there. Do not let them. I mean, it's the worst thing. It's, it's so talking about that, I, I want, when we're prepping a house, I want um, I want to get the family photos out, like if possible. Right. They might have a piano filled with family photos. I don't want them there. I mean, I, I say when someone comes in a house, I want them to picture themselves right. there and their family there and them enjoying the house, it not you. Feel like they can feel not you. If like it's all right. they see pictures of the people that are currently living there, that's all they're thinking about is them. And I need them to feel them. I have a comment about that. This property we went to yesterday for caravanning. So yeah. the, the house had a picture, I believe it was the owner with King Charles. Yes. And he yeah. had it yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It was kitchen, bedroom, wow. living room. That's cool. So I think it was more like a selling point <laughs> for cool. them yeah, because he might cool. be royalty or, that's you know, cool. so that, that was, yeah, it was interesting to me. It was, so it that, was that might everywhere. help sell the house, maybe. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's cool. That's got a cool factor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Will Chamberlain's house is on the market, by the way. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. What, what? Will Chamberlain's house. I was going to say, sometimes you'll see stuff like that, too, if you go to, like, the really expensive houses in Beverly Hills. Some fun, like some people will put up pictures of them or will leave up pictures with, of them with celebrities or kings or queens. Yeah, they cool. want a grand. That's, that's cool. cool. But a family photo, that's yeah, different. Right, right. So I try not to get a lot of religious items, family photos, like... Anything that might turn a buyer away, you know, I don't want to, if there's, if there's like a doll collection, mm. some people like are clowns, like some people, like run away, run away. <laughs> like you might see a gorgeous clown collection, but some people really freak out about clowns, yeah. right? So yeah, just yeah. keep that in mind, you know, religious, oh, items, I clowns. Religious, religious items, yeah, I mean, and sometimes like the sellers can be sensitive about them, but I've seen like, especially in LA, buyers are very eclectic and you can hit the wrong. Nerve. I just like neutral, yeah. appeal, appeal to everybody. You know, we don't, we don't know if our buyer is going to be an owner user, an investor, a builder. Like we just don't know who our buyer, we need to appeal to everybody, right? So, what would be the proper terminology to use if, you did run into that type of situation because I ran into it and it's so hard just to be very sensitive about it to not offend the seller and to and get them. So on I, I really, I really leave that to you and your the way that you want to handle it. I know you can handle it, right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I you know, I know how I would handle it, but but the way I handle it might be different for every any situation or any particular person that I'm talking to, right? So. <laughs> That was good because it was you want them to imagine them. Correct. That's where I. That's what I always say. That's what I. That's how I always get. There. I led with that. Okay. That, that's how I always get there. That I want the buyer to imagine themselves in the house, not you. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what how I, I always took from that. That's what but yeah, but just, I mean the re the religious article thing. It's the same thing. It's, a, it's, it's the same thing. Though. It is the same. You want them to do yeah. as if they would want to do it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you walk into if you walk into probably those giant religious articles like everywhere. <laughs> it's kind of, it's, I would say it's the same, you know, whatever. It's like the doll thing. Maybe. I went to a friend of mine's house. He has his mother lives lives with him. She yeah. has a full shrine. Yeah. It was disturbing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and, but it was a thing, like, because his mother was like, right. we don't want to remove it. Yeah. But it so had, that might freak some people out, right? And they would just walk out because of that. They're like, but that could be anything. The clowns, the clowns. So yeah. I have a question. So on Sunday, I, I sat in on an open house and the owner was there and it had 12 cats. Oh. And oh, okay, and let's talk about pets. Yeah, let's talk about pets. As well. So whoever did come into the open house, he pitched his ability to get them financed and they were freaked yeah. out over the 12 cats. Right. So let's talk about pets real quick because we are going to come in contact with properties that have pets. Now, should I tell the um, we need to we need no no we need to be conscious of smells right right so there's you know if, if there's dogs cats 
We need to go in there with our sniffers and make sure that it's appealing. Yeah. Sorry, I missed the camera. The owner was a lender? Yeah. And he was trying to pitch people? Yeah, when they oh, walk yeah. in. That, he, that's illegal. Well, I was felt uncomfortable. And then I actually got a lead out of that. And I reached out to her afterwards. And she was like, she was freaked out. But in, in regards to that, that was a listing that I was invited to sit on. Should I tell the listing agent that that's going if, on? If the owner of the house is a lender and is attempting to or wants to do the loan, that's a conflict of interest. But can he, he can leave a flyer. He just can't be present. No, he can't do it. No, he can't. If, if I own the home and I have a lending license and I'm representing the buyer as the lender, that's illegal. That's the only conflict you actually, that's the only part of that. Like, because technically if you're, if you, you can be licensed to be a realtor and to be a, uh, and to be a lender in the state of California, if I can, I can, I can be your lender and your buyer's agent. I can be, um, I can be a lender and a seller's agent, but I can't represent this. I can't have a lending vested stake in both sides. I, I like so. Say I have both licenses. I can, I can. I can't. You can only basically double dip on one on one side of it. Like you, if you're representing, if you have a vested interest in the house, it's a conflict of interest to mess with the finances so us, us as us as realtors so us as us as agents um if we own the property and we are the listing agent we can't represent the buyer that too right. yeah right right you can't be all three you can't you can't be the owner the listing agent and the buyer's agent because that's a total conflict of interest and it's the same thing on the it's the same thing from the financial side you have the same conflict is I, I can do whatever I want to manipulate all the money coming into my pocket. That's but why you can't do lender, it. What about owner financing? Owner okay. financing has nothing to do. I don't so need to be. be the same? I don't, if I'm I mean, a, no, the, the issue is if it's a listing agent and he's the lender also. Yeah. It's, oh, he's a listing yes. agent. And, and the lender. No, no, no. no, he's no. Not a so this oh, is owner, owner financing oh, is me oh. as the owner. I'm giving, I, I'm not actually giving you money like the bank. I'm the owner, the listing agent, and the lender. Yes, I'm. I'm not giving you money as the okay. bank. As the see, owner. you can't be the listing agent, the owner, and the lender. Yes. Yeah. Right. Just like you can't be the listing agent, the owner, and the buyer's agent. Right. So that makes sense. Now, because we, our E and O insurance is with this uh, umbrella company called Cres C R E S. Um, that's who our insurance, our E and O insurance is through. We we can offer on our listing presentation. We can tell the seller that there are these certificates um, that will provide them twenty five thousand or fifty thousand dollars in coverage uh, if there's any issue from the buyer after close of escrow. Um, this is just, it's an insurance policy for the seller. So I don't think anyone else is offering this, maybe unless they're a press affiliated company, but we are a press affiliated company. Um, so basically just by using us as their listing agent, they get $25,000 in coverage. If there is any kind of lawsuit, I guess it'll be non-disclosure. I don't know what the issues are. Um, they have 25,000 in coverage. If we use our, one of the three Home warranty companies, Fidelity, um, First American, or Old Republic. Old Republic. If we, if any of those three companies are used, it will increase their policy to to fifty thousand, and that's good for one hundred and eighty days, free, free to them. They have the option of extending it for an additional one hundred and eighty days for one hundred dollars. So that's something that we can talk about on our listing presentation. It's in, it's in my shared folder. Under, under listing miscellaneous. So something you can add to your listing presentation. Okay. Um, Did you do that often or? I've never done it. I actually, I've done it once, but this just came, this actually just came out and I've, I've forgotten on my past sure. couple of listing presentations to offer it. Do you see yourself? It. Do I see myself doing it? Um, oh, so the reason I, so, do I see myself doing it? I'm bringing my listing folder 
I'm also bringing a binded copy of my presentation with comps, which I'm going to be leaving there. Okay. I might also bring a three ring binder with marketing. Okay. Okay. So if any time that you print anything, postcard, flyer, uh, MLS print, anytime you guys print something, keep a copy for yourself in your marketing folder. Okay. So it just, it's something that you can show the seller. This is, this is what I do on a listing. This is, this is what my flyers will look like. You know, these are postcards I'll be sending out. So it doesn't have to be something you can do. I mean, you, you can get um, samples from the marketing company. They'll send you samples. So you can just bring that in your marketing folder. Um, this might be something that I put in my marketing folder just as the pages I'm showing them. Oh, and by the way, if you, you know, when you sign the listing right now, you'll have cover. You'll have twenty-five dollars or $50,000 coverage, um, which no one else is offering you. No one's talking about this. So it's good. Just an extra bonus for listing with us. There's a line, isn't there, on the agreement where you can put, check the box and put it in right the in the Is listing that? agreement, it would be in the buy in the purchase agreement and for sure in the purchase agreement. Um, so as long as the buyer is using Fidelity, First American or Old Republic, it's automatic. But if they want to, if they put in there that they're using a different company, we can call the buyer's agent and say, hey, would you mind if we use one of these three? And right, or we can count, or we can just counter that it has to be one of those three. We tried that. Well, one of my deals, they were already using Crest, uh -huh. and the other one we had it in, and then they said, no, we want to use our own. Okay. So, I both so far. Okay. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much it on my what I'm bringing with me. I'm going to go now to the MLS to show you um, how I'm creating my comps and what I'm putting into my listing presentation that I'm leaving with them and going over with them. But that's the folder that I bring with. Me. All right, so let's go here. Can everyone see my desktop? Maybe not. Yes. You can see my desktop now? No, not now. I, I did see it. And then That's I got rid of it. It's yeah. So smart. There it is. All right. Thank you. All right. So now I'm going to the MLS. So the MLS at the MLS.com. That's our MLS. You might be a member of a different MLS. Um, but I'm just showing you from our MLS, the MLS.com. Oh, so there is something I want, as long as we're in the MLS, there is something I want everyone to make sure that they do here. So we're going to do that first because it's really important. HOAs? Yes. So as soon as you know that you are selling the unit, can the owner let the HOA know that my escrow company is calling and I put in a pre-order because otherwise my escrow person said, oh, I can't order HOA so I know who my seller is. I'm like, well, they know who the seller is. Do they know who the buyer is? The, so the buyer is, is yet. And I'm like, yeah, but we need to be ready to go. Okay. Because we if, if, you're getting, if you're getting any pushback like that, then just try to get a copy of CCNRs. Yeah. Uh, just because you just yeah. want to know really 
If you can't, if they're not going to give it, they're not going to give it. So but it's important to know the rental restrictions, pet restrictions, okay. and, and any other questions that come out of the property. Find out what the parking spaces are, if there's extra storage, if that's identified. That's, that's, okay. okay. And then what the HOA, how, what the fee is, yes. and how, and what it includes. And if there's any pending litigation. Uh, right, well, you need to know if there's any going to be any hindrances to us. And also some and you buildings. you want to find that out right when you're Right, and another, another thing ah! is some building, like they might have a limit on how many units in the building can be rented. If your client wants to rent their property after they buy it, first of all, can it be rented right away? And second of all, have they hit the maximum in the building? I've seen buildings where they're over the maximum. And, you know, do they enforce They may not enforce it, but it's a gamble for the buyer. Uh, also, if it's FHA approved. If the building is FHA approved. Line that out, because that's a huge selling point. Yeah. Oh, selling. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so going into the MLS, I want to make sure that everyone has their photo uploaded if you do that. So you see my photo up there. If your photo's not there, go to listings and photos. I know it's under listings. That's just where they put it. If you go to listings, photos, um, that's where you will upload your agent photo. I'll show you right here. Upload agent photo. Okay, so it's under listings, photos. Another thing, after you do that, go to profile and listing headers. And now the instructions for this are on my check on my new agent checklist in my folder. So. Right when you open my shared folder, you'll see new agent checklist. The instructions are there for this. I just want to point it out to you. So here I just went to profile listing headers, um, create a new header. So well, I'm not creating a new header. I'm going to listing headers. I'll just show you my header, like edit. So this is my header. Um, this is just what appears on top of anything I print out from the MLS or anything I email from the MLS. It has my name, my company name, my, email, my phone number, and email. If you don't create your header, your information won't be on your MLS you know, flyers. Oh, yeah. you, have create, you have to create a header. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions about it, you need help with it, just call me, I'll help you. No problem. All right. Um, oh, another thing was before we were talking about the listing input sheet. Where do you find the listing input sheet? You can find it in my shared folder, and you can also find it here if you go to help forms. Okay, hunt under help forms. Right here on the right side are the listing input forms, and these are all the PDFs. So if you're if you're going to a condo to, you know, for that listing, you want to click on this PDF right here. If it's a single family, click on that PDF. But Here's the residential condo, I'll click the PDF. And then this is gonna pull up the input form, which I'm printing double-sided, because it's a lot of pages. So I'm gonna print this double-sided and staple it so nothing flies all over the place. Um, and I'm just gonna go through this and you can see it has check boxes. So what kind of style is the property? Um, does it have a view? What direction does it face? Is there security, right? So I'm bringing this with me to my listing appointment. It's in my folder. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be filling it out that day. I usually do it when my photographer is at the property. Um, if you're gonna be taking your own photos, which hopefully you're a good photographer. Um, if, you're, if you are doing your own photos, then you have to bring this with you. Uh, How do you get that real quick? Okay, so we go to help, help forms, and it'll take you to this page. And then right here in this column are the PDFs. If we're listing a house, it's a single family. It's a condo, it's here. It's an income property, it'll be that one. A lease, okay, we're doing a lease. And, all right, all right, now we're gonna do a, because huh, we have to do that. We're going to our seller now with comps. Oh, I do want to point out one more thing. Um, there's a box here called Quick Links. Uh, if you go on Quick Links and look at, there's five pages here of Quick Links. One of them is called Rent Spree. Oh, yeah. 
Okay. I want all of you guys to click on that rent spree link and sign up with rent spree. Um, so let me click it. I'll show you. I'm going to click on rent spree. Um, so it's asking me to sign up for free or log in. So definitely sign up. Uh, what is rent spree? So if you have a tenant looking for a property to lease, and you're, you're not the listing agent, you're just helping someone find the property for lease. Uh, really, the only paperwork that you're going to do as the tenant representative is, is send them the application. <laughs> that's, that's, really, that's really all you're going to do. So you just need to send your tenant an application. So where are you going to send them an application? From Rentsbrief. Okay, so you're going you're gonna to go in here, you're going to log in, you're going to um, send, send application, and then you're going to put your client's email address. And you're going to select that you want them to fill out an application and you want a credit report with the background screening, criminal history, all eviction search, all that. Your client will get the email and they will pay $38 directly to rents free. And then you will be emailed the report when they finish it. And then you have that and you can send that to the listing agent. How do you get to that from the home page? So from, from the MLS, uh, there's a quick link spots. Okay. And that, that quick link box can appear anywhere. Just, you know, everything here you can move around. I'm on yeah. page. In that quick links box, go to page two, because you have five pages there. On page two, it's the third one down. It's called Rent Spree. Just go there and create an account. Uh, you will use that for representing tenants. Right. Even, even if you have a lease listing, um, you can actually, when you, when you go to enter your lease listing in the MLS, it'll ask you, if you want the rent spree on your on your listing, and then I don't know, if, I, I I don't I'm not sure how it appears on the consumer side. So they might be able to do it directly. If you email your listing to a tenant directly, you're representing the tenant also. Um, they might be able to fill it out directly from your lease listing. I'm kind of confused about how you got this. How I got there? How I got to the MLS? The MLS.com. Are you on the homepage? Yeah. Okay. So there's a quick link box. There's a, the, one of the boxes is called Quick Link. Yeah. It's there. If it's not there. Just scroll down some. Yeah, yeah. you might have to scroll down. If it's not, so this, this page is customizable by here. You have your edit layout page options. Yeah, you can, you can add everything to you at this home page. Yeah, on the MLS, you can just customize the way yeah. you want. Yeah, every, everything can be moved around. That's why I put the Quick Link first so I know what this is. Yeah, you can choose the <laughs> way out. Um, page options. You can search, you know, choose what you want on there. Really, it's really easy. It's just, it's yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to comp a property now. Oh, there's a, there's something else I want you guys to also subscribe to. Uh, in this quick link box, we're going to also subscribe to Cloud CMA. Okay, that that bottom one, Cloud CMA. It's on it's on the first page of Quick Links. Cloud CMA, I'm clicking that. Cloud CMA, you don't need, you don't need to do this, but um, let, me, let me just show you what a Cloud CMA listing presentation looks like. So you can, after we do our MLS comps, you'll have, you'll have the MLS numbers. It's gonna create a report like this, comparative market analysis. Look how beautiful this is, check this out, right? So you're gonna once you sign into Cloud CMA, you'll you'll enter your bio there. You'll upload your picture, and then and this is really simple. Like it's not. I mean, it's it is simple. It just takes time to do it. So, um, but look what look at the listing presentation that it gives. You can type. You can edit every page in here, and you only need to do it once. Put your bio in, upload your photo. Um, so this is this is just a. It's pretty pretty nice looking and it's gonna be printed out. This is something I would buy. So it's got a lot of stuff, listings, comparable properties. So this is this is why I like to use uh, the cloud DNA is because uh, oh, there are no costs. I like to use uh, cloud CMA because it blows up the pictures of the listing really big. Um, I have a different MLS login. Probably other CMAs, but 
Um, so let, anyways, let's just get back, do that, just get an account with Cloud CMA. Okay, we, we can go back to it, but I wanna to get to the actual CMA. So on the MLS, we search for property, right? We, we have about maybe half an hour, hopefully. Um, we search for property. So the way that you search for property is by going to search listing, and then you're gonna decide what kind of property you're, you're searching for. Are you searching for a house, a condo, income property, land, or a lease? There's also something here called residential cross property. If you select the residential cross property, that allows you to choose a multi-item search. So if you wanna search for houses and condos, you can go residential cross property and select both of them. So for the purposes of our current uh, comps, we're gonna search for just either one, a, sing a, a single family or um, house, a single family. Okay. So this is what a regular search is that we do every day. So we do search listing single family. When I do that search, it takes me to the criteria page. The criteria page is asking me where, but, you know, all, all of there's all these criteria, where, how much, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, size, anything that I enter on this left column will narrow my search, right? So like right now I can press um, search visible map and then I'm gonna check this active box and that's gonna tell me everything that's currently for sale in this area. There's so many properties for sale, I won't even show them right now. But when I zoom in, then it'll start to show me, hopefully, yeah. These are all for sale right now, okay? That's a lot of property for sale, except in Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You um, put any code, any, any zip code to get this or you just put- So right now I'm just- so the visible map. The only right. thing I did right now is search visible map. That's all I did. I'm just, I'm just showing you, this is a regular search that we do. We do oh. a search listing single family. Okay. okay. Now that is, that is giving us any property that's for sale. And I can also click here, sold in the past. If I click that, um, I'm sorry, if I click the count, I can either click sold, but I'm not sure what kind of result is giving me, I just click the box. If I click that blue calendar, then I can say how far back I wanna go. So sold date, let's say just say last 30 days. And I hit apply. Now it's showing me what's sold in the last 30 days, boom. The green are for sale, the red is sold in the last 30 days. Now I can choose any one of these or select multiple of them and I can get a report list of what I'm selecting. But now we are doing a CMA. We're doing a comparative market analysis. In order to do a CMA, we have a subject property that we wanna compare other properties to. So we're gonna now do a CMA and we have to first select our subject property. So that's gonna be the only difference between what we do every day with this regular search and now preparing a, a comp report. A comp report, we need a subject property, right? It's the property that we're trying to comp. Yeah. Okay, so instead of going search listing and then single family, we're gonna go search CMA. So by doing that, we're, we are first choosing our subject property. So does anyone have a property they want to comp? Yeah. Oh. Uh, I just need a pen. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I got it. Thank you, thank you. So whenever we do comps, um, we, we want to record the parcel number. Very important because the MLS does have some glitches. It's not perfect. Um, the, the APN number is the tax. It's the assessor's parcel number. That's how yeah. the assessor gets their property tax. Um, that's going to help us. That number is going to help us search places that we need to use in our CMA. So, okay. So let's get first the address that we're comping. Where are we comping? Uh, 9816 Millgrove Place. 9816 and then spell the street name? And M I L L E O R. 9816 Millboro. Yeah. 
And what city is that? Uh, Beverly Hills. Excellent. Uh, post office. Yeah, post office, yes. Okay, uh, real quick. Beverly Hills and Beverly Hills Post Office. Yeah, that's the thing I want to. I want to. Let's figure out. let's figure that out. Okay, Beverly Hills. Um, Beverly Hills uses Beverly Hills Police Department, Beverly Hills Schools, Fire Beverly Hills Fire Department, Southern California Edison is the electrical. City of Beverly Hills is a water, um, and but most importantly is Beverly Hills Police Department. So. Okay. Um, Beverly Hills Post Office is when you go up past Sunset yeah. and you start going from the 11 or 1200 block and you skip to the 16, 1700 block, then you're in Beverly Hills Post Office. It's that way all the way up until Mulholland, 90210. So the, the address is whatever the address is, Beverly Hills, California, 90210. However, Everything about that is the city of Los Angeles, except the post office. Your mail is delivered from the Beverly Hills Post Office. That's why it's called Beverly Hills Post Office. But your utilities are LADWP. Your school system is LAUSD. Yeah. Right? Okay. So it's it's Los Angeles services, but your mail is delivered from the Beverly Hills Post Office. Oh, I think it's, she, it's its own it's city. Up, it's its own city. It's, 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 it's 90210. It's, 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 it's its own city. Yeah. Okay. It's 90210. It's 90210. The mail comes from Beverly Hills Post Office. Yes, but I was so confused. I... No, it's don't be confused right. anymore. I just explained it. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, no more confusion. But but you might have to explain it to your clients. Yeah, that's right. thing. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to comp 9816 Millboro. Okay. The first thing I do whenever I do comps is I go for public records. So it's the first thing I do. Number one, public records. So I'm going to go search public records, and I use this one, the MLS Realty X. Okay, there's three choices. I go search public records, the MLS Realty X. I'm going to go slow so you guys can write this down. This is is it going to be distributed on YouTube as well? Yes. I So my last listing class was canceled on YouTube. They canceled me. What? They did, yeah, what? I don't know why. <laughs> uh, they pulled it because of privacy concerns. So I don't know what I did wrong. You probably didn't do anything wrong, but probably yeah, that's probably. Like what I was asking earlier. Okay, like, thank you. Making that for this group, for like the class, for KW Beverly Hills? It's, uh, so Serena oh, publishes it to the KW Beverly Hills website. But do you care about people who are outside of KW Beverly Hills seeing it? I'm uncomfortable with anyone seeing anything I do. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, so tell, they can make a private. Uh, they can oh. make a private. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's them not a fight. I'm gonna buy it. Like, if the office wants to advertise themselves with me, that's great. Like, you know, so fine. I mean, I'm whatever. You know, I just have to be careful. I was canceled once. I went on canceled twice. I don't want to be canceled by you guys. All right, MLS, so search public records, MLS Realty X. Um, okay, this is my first step. I'm gonna get a lot of information about the property just from this, okay, so I hate I hate to go fast because I, I don't wanna lose anyone, but you know, I am conscious of the time. I mean, I can, I can spend days on this. Um, okay, now we have a property address. I, I went search public records, MLS Realty X. It popped up a new window. I'm going to enter the property address, 9816 Millsboro, Millboro. Yeah. Okay, so I have Millboro Price Beverly Hills. That's the one we're going for. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to click on search. And here we go. Okay. This property is... Sold and the sale was the lease. This was the most current. This was the most current activity on the MLS. So, at least September eighth, twenty twenty three, for twelve thousand dollars a month. And it was advertised in the MLS as a four bed, three bath, twenty seven hundred and forty two feet, built in seventy five. So I'm actually going to just write that stuff down real quick, just so. 
I have it. Um, volume eight. That doesn't matter. I don't want to have to come back somewhere. So. 2742 square feet. The lot is 12601. That's important. I need to know the, the bedroom, bathroom, square footage of the house and lot. And then it was built in 1975. Is the YB, the year built. Okay, I have here Nahal is the owner. I don't know if that's the only owner. Um, I would I would only know that right now if I went into title. Okay. And I can also see down, maybe further down, what's going on. Um, location information. The zone is LA, LA one and a half. So usually residential is LA R1. This is one and a half. Um, maybe that's an ADU thing. I'm not sure. We can, we can look in the LA zoning to clarify what that is. ADU? <laughs> it, could, it could be. LARE15. So I don't know. Um, and this says it's in the cul de sac. That's interesting. Um, tax information. So when I look at the tax information, I'm looking in this in this area, in this column right here, to see if there's any crazy numbers. Sometimes you'll see in areas in Columbia, Lancaster, you know, just in, in areas that have uh, Areas with crack homes, there are some builders that went belly up and the city had to come in and issue bonds in order to finish the project. That's called a mellow roost. And that'll appear here as some crazy number in the thousands that could happen. Um, and it'll get, takes 20 years to pay it off or something like that. But that's where I, I would see that pop up. Here are characteristics of the property. So this is showing the building square foot is 2742. If there's a discrepancy in the public records, uh, versus what was listed in the MLS, that there would be two numbers here. One would say public records, 2,500, MLS, 2,742, right? So that, that's possible that two different things would pop up there. I'm seeing four bedroom, three bath. Uh, what else am I seeing here? Other improvements, addition shed. That's interesting. I don't know. Just looking around. Going on. Uh, okay, here we go to the listing information. Uh, it was sold. If the property was was currently for sale, I would say active. But this says sold. Um, and now I'm looking. I can see the MLS history here. Keep going down. Okay, here is the chain of title. Chain of title means it went from this owner to that owner to that owner to that owner. Now I I knew that Nahal was an owner. Um, and I see that there was a grantee here from an LLC to Nahal for 2.3, recorded December 15th. There was another recording on the same day from Alan Abrams to Nahal. And if I keep going back, this was a March recording. This was a January 2006. Okay. So I'm just going back. I see Kahanian family was the owner of this property. Kahani and made it house. Yeah. my parents' old house. Okay, so they so they sold it in 2015 to Leland Development LLC. And Leland Development must be Alan Abrams, who sold it to Naha. Okay, and but but look, yeah, okay. So we had we had Alan Abrams and Leland LLC on the signed two separate grantees that were recorded on the same day, the Nahal. Okay, now we know Nahal's the owner. Yeah. What's the, um, are the dwelling size again? The, the, uh, the, the house is 2742. Is that what you're asking? Of living space? Living space, yes. All right, so now we can also see what the mortgage history is. So I, I'm going to go back to this recording on December 2015. And here I see the same date, December 2015. There was a 1.5 mortgage taken. And now I'm going to go to 2016. There was a 1.5 mortgage taken, which, which tells me they refinanced this. Okay. Right now I'm trying to determine if there's pressure on the seller to sell. Motivation. Oh. Right, that's where I'm going with this. Oh. Okay, now I see in September 2022, there was a half a million dollar loan taken 
that does not pay off one and a half million. So either they paid off the paid off a million and borrowed half a million, or they took a home equity line of credit for half a million or a second. I'm guessing it's a second. So now they are two million owed on this property. This seven hundred fifty thousand dollars came from a private individual, which I'm guessing, only guessing, paid off this half a million. They still owe this one and a half and the seven fifty. I think they're in this property now for two and a quarter million. That's my guess. Uneducated guess. Okay, two and a quarter million. Um, okay. So now with that information, I need to know what the what the property's worth. Okay, so I think I think that there's two and a quarter million owed. They might have paid down that first loan some, but let's just stick with that. Okay. All right, now we're going to do our comps. So we have, oh, most importantly, sorry, the APN number. I need that. That's what I was first talking about. The APN number is right here in this corner. 4384. 4384025-010. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to search CMA, search CMA. And then I'm going to click the green button at the bottom called create new CMA. Create new CMA. Now, this is right now, I'm just choosing my subject property. Okay, subject property. What, I'm, what am I naming it? I'm gonna name it the property address. So it's 9816 Millboro. And I'm gonna use the same name for the client, 9816 Millboro. I don't put the, the client's name here. I can, I, I usually don't. I just put the address there for both. And I, it's a residential single family. So I'm selecting that and then continue. Everyone with me so far? I Sorry, uh, have yeah. you to CMA wizard? I went to create new CMA oh, gotcha. right there in the bottom, yeah. and then it popped up this window. And then I'm entering the names as the property address and selecting single family and then continue. All right, continue. Then I'm gonna choose my property. So look up a specific property, that's what I wanna do. And I can do this by the street, the MLS number, APN number. For this right now, I'm gonna use the APN. 4384-025-010. Okay, so I have all this activity here that came up for this property. Um, I want to use the most recent, which is going to be one of these that start with 23. Um, I know this is our MLS. In our MLS, our listing, our MLS numbers start with the year. So 23, these are current. Um, however, I also know that this was a lease and not a sale. So I'm probably gonna just use public records right here instead of choosing the MLS. If it was recently sold, I would choose one of those as sold, or maybe I won't, doesn't matter. Um, I'm gonna choose this one, that's fine. The, the number is just gonna look, it's just gonna have a lease number, so it's not gonna have a sale. But I like to use the most recent one because if anything has changed at the property, I would assume, never assume, but I would assume that <laughs> the listing agent filled in the MLS with the most current representation of what the house is. So public records might call the house a two bedroom, one bath, but it was current, it was just last listed as a four bedroom, three bath. I'm gonna go with the four bedroom, three bath. So I'm gonna click the most recent one, continue. Okay, now I need to search for comparables. So when I hit this, it's gonna take me back to a regular search page. So all that, that whole thing that we just did was select the subject property, okay? That was all about selecting. Now we're back to a regular search page, regular criteria search. The way I'm gonna do the criteria search now is I'm not entering anything here, right in a second. I'm gonna do a map search. There's a button called map search, which is gonna bring up this page for the map. And I'm gonna search here by APN number again, not the, it's not the property address. I'm gonna search by the APN number 
0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
And here we go. Now I'm going to select all my comps. So everything here is a comp because this, I, I selected such a small area. Um, I do something stands out to me right away is this 100 square feet. That's bizarre. I don't know what that is. Um, 100, I have no idea. Could be land. It's also not one of our MLS. Like, let's click on it just to see what it is. That's weird. 100 square feet. Okay. Bankruptcy, court sale, equity sale. So that's pending. Um, not really sure what that is, but it's going to throw off my comps. Um, I might print this. Just having this, I might print this just to have so we can talk about it, but I, it's not part of my comps because that's weird. I don't know. Hundreds of feet. Maybe not. I don't know. It's pending. They were asking two million. Maybe I'll keep it. Um, anyways, I'm going to select the comps that I want to use. I just hit this button to select all of them. Is there anything that I want to throw out? So our subject property look is, is lit in yellow. It's highlighted. Um, we are 2,742 feet. This 6,000 foot house is not a comp. I'm going to unselect that one. Uh, 4,600 compared to our 2,700, not a comp. 4,500, not a comp. I'm going to take out those two. Uh, I might print them separately just so we have them to discuss if the seller brings them up, but they're not comps. Um, 3,600 square feet compared to our 2,700. It's, it's, it's stretching, but I'll put it in there. All right. Now I'm going to press down here, add selected comps, because those are the comps I selected. I'm sure I've lost most of you. And my, my response to that is we're going to do this over and over and over again. Don't worry. And if you need to do it, I will help you do it. Uh, but I'm just showing you the process. So now I, the ones that I selected, I press add selected comps and it highlighted them all. I have these three stragglers here. I'm going to hit this drop down box and go hide unselected and then go. It'll get rid of those. Now I have those and I'm going to go down here and go to reports and hit go. Now I have a report. Now I have a CMA. This is my CMA. So I have. I have my subject property on top, I have a pending property, and I have four solds. Uh, let's see if we can get a price. Um, our property is 2,700 feet on a 12.6 lot. Here's a 2,700 feet on a 13.5 lot. That sold for 4 million. Here's a 2,700 feet on a 13 lot that sold for 2.7. That's a big discrepancy. Um, I can go over here to the photos and see what the discrepancy is. So. Let's first look at the 2728 property. So I'll just click on the photos. Okay, so we have a property on the, on the even side of the street, which ours is also. Uh, let's see. So it's got recessed lighting, it's got uh, uh -huh. all that. So. So I, I don't know if those are ceramic. I think they're ceramic floors. How are you? So it has, uh, you know, I think anyone walking into this kitchen might want to update it, maybe. Uh, so just checking it out. So this is this is an older granite. I don't think builders are using this type of granite right now. Um, the cabinets. So this is trap. I think it's travertine. So just looking at the floors, I'm just I'm looking what's in here. Um, the finishes. I see power lines right behind the property. So just just making a note of that. <coughs> got a tub. Got a walk-in shower. Got a safe. That's a great picture to advertise to the public that there's a safe in this house. Now everybody knows there's a safe in this house. I would not publish. I would personally would not publish this picture. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not bashing the agent. I'm just saying, like, this is a privacy issue. So now everybody knows that there's a safe in this closet. Oh. Right? It is, it is, it is. So it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea. If, if there's a safe in your listing, I recommend you not to give it. Oh. So, it's, so it's rather just take a picture of like the main right. or, or, or uh, Photoshop it up. Photoshop it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do that one. 
Um, it's just it's a security issue. Yeah, you don't need to advertise. Right. Say the same thing with like panic rooms. It's a big thing because like people will come to the open house just to find it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, or, or remember what he said earlier too. You always tell your clients remove jewelry, remove valuables. Yeah. If they remove it, what do you think they're going to put it? Right. And firearms. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so the property doesn't have a pool. Yeah. Uh, but it does have a lot of <laughs> a lot of sure. back space. It has a little run here. Okay. Oh, there's a barbecue area. Okay. So that's okay. So now that sold for 2772. Let's look at the identical square footage, one less bedroom, but almost identical square footage that sold for 4 million. So this is a mid century modern, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and they opened the. <clears throat> This, this had large sliders and they created a larger slider. Uh, there's a lot of buyers for mid-century modern. They, they opened, they put a lot of glass here. Well, this was built, not this was built. So this was built in 1960. Yeah, very, very mid-century. There's a pool. We're talking four million. Okay, so uh, high ceilings, updated floors, kitchen, windows. Got a good number, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's an open it's an open floor plan. Um, this is a this is a really nice for a mid century modern. So. Got to be more to it. But most mid-century moderns are very chopped up, very compartmentalized. Uh, this seems to be an open, really funky, groovy. Uh, it's a nice property. Is there a class going to start right now? Yeah. A, a different class? Okay. MLS. All right. So an MLS class? You continue your life. You can, you can just continue where you left. <laughs> okay. So... Um, so real quick, real quick, um, you have this report. If you go down here, there's report options. Print this, go to report options, select feature sheet, select and reload. The feature sheet is going to show you the comments for each property. This is something you're going to go over with your seller. You're going to show them uh, what the listing what the original listing price was what the listing price was that's where you'll see reductions you'll see how long it was on the market for you know so there's a lot of information there go again to report options and go to market analysis and then print this one the market analysis report is going to show you the average price per square foot and the average price sold the average listed price um, so now remember we had one property that said 100 square feet. This is where it's going to throw it off, the market analysis report. I'm going to go back to my search results. I'm going to get rid of this one that says 100. I'm going to uncheck it and I'm going to go, I, uh, I need to remove unselected. And then I'm going to hide unselected and go. And then I'm going to go back to reports, go and then go to report options, and then I'll go back to my market analysis report. And then these, then I'll use this. So, you know, everyone wants to know what's the average price per square foot here. The average price per square foot is, uh, for the listed price was a million 179, and it's sold for a million 152. That's the average sold price per square foot. Uh, so anyways, that's it for today. I know there's so much to go through. Don't worry, we will continue to go through. Yeah, class tomorrow, JJ. Class tomorrow is people. Full. The door is full. They're not going to bowl. No. So thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't have a, a question and answer session. Uh, JJ, can we call you if we have a question? And you can always call me or text me. Yeah. Oh, I was, I was, you have so much. I think we're leaving. I have to leave. I have to leave by one thirty.